<clears throat> do you think those SNPs panels like 23 and me are useful for practice of longevity tactics? And what are the eight to 12 genes that increase longevity that you always talk about? Well, those are sort of two separate questions. Uh, most of the genes that we, um, talk about that can drive longevity, um, you don't necessarily pull out of those, um, those tests. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, one of them you do, I think the Foxo families do tend to show up on even the SNP test. So they'll say, oh, you have a favorable Foxo 3A uh, genotype. Um, but no, I don't find those tests to be helpful for when it comes to that. Again, this is, you know, at the risk of just sounding like the, <clears throat> the, the crotchety old dude. Um, you, you'll, you'll know you have longevity genes if you know your ancestors. That's, that's, I mean, and again, you could argue, well, your, if your ancestors died in the Holocaust, then, you know, you're not going to know that necessarily. But, but as a general rule, most people today who show up who are, you know, in their thirties or forties or whatever, if your parents are in their, you know, eighties and they're incredibly healthy and your grandparents lived until their nineties or beyond, especially in an era when the world wasn't so easy to live in, um, you, you probably have some subset of those genes. So what are a handful of those genes? Well, the FOXO genes, of course, being probably the most ubiquitous across that. Um, genes in the IGF family, the mm -hmm. GHR family, so growth hormone receptor family, um, uh, APOC3 family. Uh, pr th those would be the biggest ones. And blank me, correct me if I'm blanking on anything, but I think the big, big ones are APOC3 APOE, obviously, mm -hmm. FOXO, 3A, IGF, GHR, I think are the top five. You then get into this sort of second tier of them. Of course, LPA, mm -hmm. lots on that, um, which of course is the gene for LP little a. Um, T, uh, TSHR. Yep. Um, what else? CTEP. I... Oh, of course, CTEP. Uh, I'm sorry. Alive. No, CTEP yeah. belongs in the top five. Yeah. 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 So... What's more interesting to me, by the way, than these genes is what's the phenotype of these mm -hmm. genes? Like, why do these genes matter? Well, if you th let's go through them, right? So having favorable PCSK9, favorable LP little a, favorable CTEP, favorable APOC3, every one of those genes drives a phenotype that lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease. Having a favorable IGF GHR phenotype and FOXO lowers your ask you foxo probably plays a role across the board yeah it's like a transcription risk. factor so it's like this global yeah uh, Fo global foxo effects. is sort of the global homeostasis so that's i think foxo is risk reducing across the board ghr igf probably more cancer specific apoe more alzheimer's specific uh lpa ctep apoc3 and pcsk9 though very rare um obviously cardiovascular specific so the meta theme from this topic is if if you are genetically blessed to become a centenarian the gift you got is that you have genes that delay your receipt of chronic disease by what appears to be about 20 years you get a, you get a 20 year and i think we write about this i think in the book i describe this as a phase shift you, you get a 20 year phase shift on chronic disease 